Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you all there is to know about WP Speed of Light. This is a freemium plugin found on the WordPress.org repository. I'm going to be talking about its free features and whether or not you should honestly be using it for your website. I gone ahead and install it and I clicked the button to bypass their little setup wizard. I'm just going to go and break down all the options for you in an easy to understand fashion. So when you install it, you get this nice little panel. Um, it looks it looks decent. You click if you click on this run a speed analysis, you can click launch speed test, and it will attempt to get a generalized speed results for the page. It'll say you have eight plugins, and I'm assuming that if you have a substantial amount of plugins, it will flag you. Even though some of the plugins I have installed are quite large, however. To run a speed test, you have to get a web page test API key. My general advice on these types of speed tests are, honestly, I don't see why I would get the API key because I don't need to run it from the admin bar. Uh, when I ran the site kit video, that was my general advice as well. I just go to the website and run it so that way I don't pull in the data all the time in the admin panel where I'm just not gonna read it. I, I, my general advice with speed is, Yes, you should pay attention to it, but you shouldn't be like worrying about it to an excessive degree because while performance is important, I wouldn't say it's the absolute most important bit. So when you install it though, it does the basics. It adds gzip compression, it adds the expires headers, and it does a page caching system. This is great. As you can see here, uh, the TTFB is well within the range that I would say is acceptable, and that's about all that it's done. So basic page caching checked off. Good things to start with. Now, we need to see what else we can honestly do because if this plugin is just a glorified page caching plugin with a nice wrapper, it's not doing much even for a free plugin. Um, we already went through the speed, op uh, speed analysis. If you go to speed optimization, now this is where the real options start to live. This plugin has quite a bit in common with auto optimize. In fact, there are so many plugins that have kind of, I wouldn't say knocked off auto optimize, but have been inspired by auto optimize. And I suspect this is one of them. So when you install it, you get this nice little settings panel underneath speed optimization. I kind of wish that the admin settings panel was this page instead of the other nonsense, but you know, here we go. So the cache system is activated. This is the page caching. Expires headers are added. We could choose to cache external scripts. So that's a great feature. Let's see how well it works. We have a Google API JS right here, does it work? Okay, so it doesn't seem like it's doing anything yet. Maybe we have to do some of the other options though. Cache for desktop should be activated. You can, now you could choose to clean up the cache every X amount of minutes. That's excessive. 10 hours is totally acceptable. You don't want it to be too low or else you're just wasting server resources. Caching for tablet. So it's the same as desktop and this is same as desktop. The only time you'd want to say, spe specify it for tablets or mobile is if you're running any sort of PHP checks where it checks the user agents or if you have a mobile specific theme. I would never recommend though bypassing the cache for any of them. It's better to split the cache for mobile users and tablet users than it is to not serve them any cache page at all. And then you could choose to exclude URLs here to exclude from caching if you're using WooCommerce, for instance, make sure your cart checkout and uh, my account pages are excluded here and you should be covered of all the basics. WordPress optimization, these are just general cleanup options. They're not gonna really do much for you in actual performance. Uh, disabling gravatars and removing emojis are totally going to improve the performance because it's cutting out actual bloat. Removing query strings won't do much for you and neither will removing these URLs, but I'll do it just so that way the header is a little cleaner and just to demonstrate that the features do work. Um, I, I really wish that emojis was a free feature because there are so many free plugins that do this for you. You can just slap them on there. They have no settings panels and they do exactly that. Uh, disabling grab avatars is also a good option. You can use only local avatars, which I would totally say is a good thing to do. Grab avatars are typically inherently inefficient because they're not very well compressed but that is where we are at. Now under the group and minify option, we have quite a few interesting settings. Advanced file exclusion. I'm really hoping that they didn't 
add the exclusion options as a paid feature, that would be quite silly. Why would you pay to have files excluded? That would just make half the plugin worthless and it kind of traps you if you're running into an issue. So we enabled the HTML compression. We're just gonna make sure that it works. Awesome, it does. These compressions look very similar to auto-optimize. The JS isn't being combined at, uh, minified at all and neither is the inline CSS. That's pretty auto-optimized familiar, so I'm assuming they're using the same minification engine. Uh, CSS minification, we're gonna activate that and we will group it too. I always typically recommend grouping your files because most of the time your themes and your plugins they're very inefficient. They're probably using code from each other. They're probably using some of the same libraries. And honestly, the reduction in file size tends to lead to more performance gains. Well, in very niche applications where you don't have very <laughs> large code redundancy, yes, HTTP2, it tends to be faster to not combine your files. But the fact of the matter is most WordPress sites are inherently bloated. They're very large. They use a lot of redundant code. They're pulling in the whole libraries when they only need a few snippets from it. So combining, combining them into one file tends to still yield performance gains. That's why I still recommend it. Uh, JS minification, so we enable this option. And uh, to combine the JS, we enable this. So I wonder if they exclude jQuery by default because if they don't, that makes this entire option pretty useless. Okay, they did, they did. That's very auto-optimized like of them. I wonder if dash icons is also excluded. This this is really giving me close to auto-optimized vibes because the exclusions are exactly the same. Um, honestly, I'm pretty sure they're using the exact same functionality, but this looks great. It's not breaking anything obvious in the theme. There are no JS errors being deployed. We'll just click this, run a quick test on a couple pages to see what happens. Um, but honestly, I'm uh, pretty impressed. It does its job just as I expect. The URLs look good. Mer let's check the merge JS file, just to see how it looks. Oh, it's also merging inline JavaScript. So we have to talk about this real quick. Um, since inline JavaScripts are automatically combined, uh, this will avoid issues in the short term because you won't have any undefined errors typically and you won't run into too many JS errors, but the downside is, is your cache size is gonna start getting very large. On this theme in particular, there's a lot of dynamic bits to it that change on every page load. So the cache will eventually get incredibly large and cause all sorts of problems. This is a little bit odd. And the reason that I find it to be odd is because the merging of the CSS files doesn't aggregate the inline CSS. My general advice here is if you're running a fairly complicated website, uh, like this one's running Listing Pro, I would not enable the group JS option in this plugin because your cache size is just gonna get absurdly large. In fact, you would honestly be better just turning off the minify options and using auto-optimize where you can do the exclusions for free. Um, so really weird settings. I'm not fully understanding some of the logic that they chose here. Uh, the advanced settings, so preloading, that would be useful. Uh, Prefetching, these are paid features. Totally fine with preloading and prefetching being paid. They have to make money somehow. And But uh, exclusions, I'm totally not okay with exclusions being a paid feature. That's basically saying, hey, we're shipping you a product that kind of works, but to get the bulk out of the features that we're already providing to you, you have to pay for it anyways. I would rather they just didn't include the grouping feature for JS and CSS than to like give it in such a half-baked manner. So not acceptable. Under the WooCommerce settings, oh, this is basically all pro settings. Um, why is the Heartbeat API in here as well? That should probably be in its own menu or somewhere else, maybe under the advanced window. I wouldn't stick it in here because there are many other things that do use the Heartbeat API. Uh, auto cleanup of sessions data, that's awesome. Totally should be done. Clearing WooCommerce transients, that also should be good. I'd probably put this under the database optimization though, but that's fine. Clear the customer session and cart. Um, you can save quite a bit of storage. This is also just fine. Disabling of scripts on non WooCommerce pages. I'm totally fine with that being a paid feature. Same with that and the same with that. that those are all fine. This is just a snippet and a referral link to image recycle. So it's not their own plugin, or at least I don't believe they make it. But anyways, image recycle, haven't covered on the channel before, but it works like every other paid plugin. 
Database cleanup. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can we can clean up quite a bit of junk in here. In fact, this pro version has more cleanup options than WP Rocket or Swift, I believe, because you get the ability to remove duplicated metadata as well as there is no ability to clean up orphan metadata. That is a shame. So it's almost as good as WP Sweep. It's like they have half of the options there, but they don't have the orphan cleanup. I wish they added that. The one thing that I don't fully understand is why the optimized tables option is on behind the paywall, because this is a pretty standard feature. Even WP Optimize, which is now a caching plugin for some weird reason, has that as a free option. I would totally be fine with these extra cleanup options being in the pro version, but not this. You also can't clean up on a schedule, but I'm not losing any sleep over that. CDN integration, it's basically like every other plugin. You go ahead and you'll give the URL here. You choose what content you want to include by including the folder names. And if you want to exclude a file type, you do so here. This looks very similar to the three options in Auto Optimize, but these are really all you need to do a very basic pull CDN integration. And then if you want to clean up the cache of other CDNs and apparently a varnish, you can do so by paying for it. Uh, the configuration, this is where you can set up the web page test API key. Again, I'm not a big favorite on that feature. Uh, you can disable optimization for admin users. This is good if you notice your page builders are breaking. I would totally enable this for admin users because there's always something that breaks in the real world of silly plugins that are used when you're logged in. Uh, you could choose to display the cleanup cache bar up here. Uh, sure, that's totally fine. Um, every plugin has that. I wish it was something like a little bit more obvious like WP SOL for speed of light, something like that or just speed of light, something up there instead of clean cache, but with an eraser. Maybe if they just took the eraser out even, I'm not really sure. I, I just am not a fan of that eraser. Uh, but we'll leave that here. You can include your API key here, import and export. You can choose to export the configuration and import it to another website or use it as a backup. Translation tool allows you to follow their documentation to install various translations. You could choose to override a string in here by simply overriding the text. So when a cache clean is performed and you can just add your own write in here and then you click save and close. This is good if the plugin is not auto already translated. In fact, this is a good thing because normally translating plugins and themes is absurdly complicated. This is a much better system and I'm glad to see some plugins are adopting it and themes even into their admin panels. Uh, another one is Newspaper by TagDiv. They have a very similar layout. And uh, this is great because internationalization on WordPress has always been something that's always been rather difficult. And it's because training somebody how to use, you're only going to get a plugin translated if you crowdsource it you, or you have to pay an exuberant amount of money. So I'm glad this option is here and they didn't put it behind a paywall. Very generous of them. Um, this is totally acceptable though. I, I like I like that this is here. I wish more plugins. I wish there was a standardized way of doing this in core. There should just be a menu that anybody who wants to translate something can and then submit it to the developers. Because right now downloading something like polylang and modifying .po files is just so many steps. Uh, not uh, like po editor for modifying po files and it's just a bunch, a bunch of nonsense. And the system check is basically a glorified uh, checkoff list that they say you need to have these options enabled to get the most from our plugin. Um, this is also really useful for just general debugging. They basically say if there's any issues in here, make sure you read them and send it to us. And it recommends that you run PHP 7.3, which is awesome. I recommend that as well. Um, for performance and security reasons, 7.2 plus. Comparing to previous versions, the execution time of PHP 7.x is more than twice as fast and 30% lower memory consumption. This is really just from 7.0 to 5.6. While 7.3 and 7.2 and 7.4 are making incremental improvements, the difference between 5.6 and 7 is dramatic. But for most users, this is nothing crazy. Um, honestly, here is my conundrum with this plugin. A lot of great features in the paid version, but there are some features in this free version that are just absent, that should be. 
having the JS automatically merge inline JS and then selling the solution as not combining it is not an acceptable answer. If you're going to take what I'm pretty sure at this point is auto optimizes minification engine, you can at least include the exclusion options for free. Or if you still want to encourage people to purchase it, only enable the minify, minify options for free. And then the grouping and the grouping options are behind the paywall and make the exclusions for free. Basically, this plugin is just not. I, I couldn't recommend this over using just auto optimize plus any other plugin like cache enabler because there's just a lot of weird exclusions from the free version for no real benefit to you. Um, if you have any, if you've used this plugin on your site, please feel free to uh, give me your insights in the comments below. We're gonna enable this option just to show you kind of what it can do. Uh, it's definitely not a foolproof test, but you know, it's decent enough for a demonstration. Merging all your JS is definitely not a good thing to do though. Um, very weird. So we're running another test just to demonstrate, but um, otherwise make sure you like the video and you subscribe and all of that goodness. We still, I'm still, I still can't recommend this plugin to you guys in all honesty. I, there are just things that don't make a lot of sense. And there we go. So it does lead to some obvious improvement. The one downside being, da, 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 da. The, first of all, that, that third party feature didn't work as far as I can tell, at least not with the Google Maps API. But most importantly, it doesn't seem to work for <laughs> fixing its own problems that it causes. Otherwise, I just wanna say thank you all so much for watching and goodbye.